I remember writing a post about the importance of having a confident leader. Now, some people will be kind of concerned about that, that confidence can quickly be arrogance. And I actually think if you go to a certain point, uh, confidence can actually lead to arrogance. But on the other side of it is insecurity. And insecurity or arrogance, either one of those things on both sides of the spectrums, actually could cause issues. And so I wrote a post about this, and there's one part in particular I wanted to share with you based on today's uh, podcast guest. And so when I talk about insecurity, um, the insecure leader is often not comfortable with challenge because they believe it makes them look bad. The arrogant leader actually believes that, you know, don't even bother challenging their ideas because they are always right. But the confident leader is comfortable with challenges and encourages because the focus is not on their idea, but the best ideas also comfortable challenging back. So when you look at that idea of kind of being in that middle space of being that confident leader, it takes curiosity. And in all honesty, I actually want this more, not only of our educational leaders, but our politicians. A lot of times when we actually hear politicians, they're not leading from a place of curiosity, you know, really wanting to hear from people, but it's, there's almost an arrogance or an insecurity. They're making decisions not for the right reasons or for, not for the people they serve. And the reason I bring this up is because I actually got to talk to the Bellflower Unified, Bellflower Unified uh, board chair, Brad Critchfield. And he actually, um, I'll be honest with you, he, yeah, when I first met him, he, he, he actually um, has trained MMA. Um, he's, he's in his 30s, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I met a lot of board chairs, and I guess, you know, if you're in MMA, it might be <laughs> a good opportunity, but whatever. So he had a really interesting perspective, and as I listened to him, I saw a certain curiosity to really, you know, help lead his community from a place of curiosity. And so I thought about that in the context of this idea of being a confident leader and leading from the, the, the uh, willingness to be curious because if you always think you know the answer, that arrogance, it can actually lead to issues. If you sometimes think that you're just better than everyone or you're, you don't feel comfortable in your own, you know, your own abilities, that can lead some good, bad decisions. But confidence is actually knowing sometimes you're wrong and being okay saying that. It, it's, it is something, and I share a story about that uh, in the podcast. It was really interesting to have Brad on the podcast. I've never actually had someone who's specifically in the role of board chair, let alone a board member. I think you're going to find this really interesting. Uh, I, I, I did this in anticipation of joining Bellflower uh, for their opening day event in August of 2024. Um, so you might be listening to this from Bellflower. I can't wait to meet all of you. Uh, but you're going to love this. There's a lot of really great insights. I learned a lot from our conversation. I know you will too. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Cross. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so honored and it's like, it's so weird because I actually had the superintendent of Bellflower on just yesterday. And so you might be seeing this back to back, uh, but I actually have the board president, Brad Critchfield. And uh, Brad, I'm gonna be honest with you, I wasn't expecting like a, a, a younger guy, uh, I know. I, you know, like, and I don't know, maybe and maybe there's, there's a, a change. Um, you, you told me like, not only do you, are you the president of the board to do MMA stuff? So, you know, those should be some pretty fun parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I would, I would I mess with it. you right away. Uh, so, yeah. So I I'm really pumped to have you. And we, we've been talking like we've known each other for the last hour. We didn't record any of it. So that was probably the best part of the conversation. And now but we're, giving you, we're, we're giving, giving you the leftovers, but Brad, I'm like so pumped. Uh, when I was talking to Lisa, uh, yesterday and just having conversation with you as well. I can feel the pride that you have in the school district, the staff, all the things that are happening there. And so like the more I, I talk to people from Bellflower, the more excited I am to, to join you all. And I, and I actually full disclosure, I've never had like a, a board chair on my podcast ever. So this is, this is a first. I know. I know you, I checked you out and we speak the same language in a lot of ways when it comes to, you know, the, the communication, the tech stuff, and it has been a great conversation, but I'll, I'll be honest. I, I watched some of the shows and I was like, man, you're, he's talking to superintendents and like the academia, you know, <laughs> likes, and I'm like, I, that, that's a t tough ax to follow. No, uh, like, you're that's, good. that's not really me. I, I, I kind of look at things a little bit differently, uh, you know, on the policy angle as board president and, uh, 
yeah but i mean i love what you're doing man so just kudos to you dude i keep going man. i love it yeah man, like and this is this is like i i you know i i really connected with you because you're and I'll, I'll let you talk about all this you know um you saw an opportunity to kind of join there you're you're a parent in the community but i i think a lot of times we think it's just like a parent that just wants for their kids but you right. see it as a real holistic thing it's not just about the kids in the school it's about how you serve your community overall so I, i'll let you talk about that but you know I, i'm really excited to have you on so if you can just tell everyone who you are what you do today how you got there i think it's a great place to start george first first of all thank you for having me and i'm really excited and uh yeah man, so i'm brad critchfield i'm the board president i've been on for two years and you're right i do see uh the work that we do in the school district isn't just about the school district it those are the residents of your community and they're going to if you do it right and mm -hmm. they have a sense of pride in your district and where they're raised and they build those solid connections, they're probably going to stick around. And those are your future neighbors, you know, the students right. in the district right now. So I, I see it as a, a whole community thing. And it's very important that we invest the, not only the resources, but the time and attention and passion into our kids. So I love doing uh, all the work that we do uh, at Belfort Unified. Well, the, the, when I was talking to you before, one of the things that I, I say, and I, I felt this is um, really connected to your own personal mission. And I think the, the mission of Bellflower is my, my focus is not to prepare our kids for the real world, right? It is actually to help our kids make the real world better. And I'm not even talking in the future only. I'm talking about that right now. And when I was talking to Lisa, talking to you, you can see there's an emphasis on seeing kids have you know some autonomy some really empowerment and ownership over making the real world better currently right because the kids mm -hmm. you know we like it's not like kids turn 18 and then they go into the real world the real world exists for everybody right now and right. so like having some ownership over that and so one of the things that i really appreciated that you were talking about prior is really kind of how do you actually really kind of a forward vision you know for your community not to like get rid of everything that's done in the past but really to kind of build on it because you and I, like there's some, there's some fundamental things. I think, you know, the importance that we were talking about this, like with our exercise regimens, you know, talking about discipline, you know, um, you know, really critical skills, but also we have to continue to look at the future. So like, how do you see kind of your role in supporting, you know, Bellflower's move to like continuously embrace new opportunities for not only the students, but for the staff as well? Well, I think one thing that Belfort Unified is really lucky to have is a, a very passionate and very focused staff where, you know, my role, our role on the board is to support great ideas and great initiatives and, mm. and really invest into things that we feel align with our vision for the district. And, you know, whether that's, you know, career pathways, uh, you know, that's a big one uh, for me, especially for our community. We have a lot of really great uh, pathways like aviation and esports, mm. like things that speak to what kids would want to do. Because I believe that if you want kids to do well, they have to want to do it. Um, so, you know, even like we have an amazing esports program that I, I'm actually taking my daughter to the Smash Brothers competition next week. Really? She's all into it. Yeah, it's great. That's pretty so cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> we're doing things like yeah. that are like we not only do the students now enjoy, but it's giving like the elementary uh, students, like something like my daughter talks about all the time. I can't wait to go to Mayfair high school because she knows there's things that are waiting for her that she's going to enjoy. And I feel like without that school can be kind of a chore. So we have to make it not only fun, but give them a sense of purpose and productivity. And that's why I feel like the forward thinking mentality is it's like, what are these kids like, what are, what's going to inspire them and what's going to set them up for success? So one of my, I don't know who said this quote. I just don't want to take credit for it. It's just not mine, but you really made me think of it is someone said happiness is always having something to look forward to. Yeah, I, I can get down with that. And that that's like what you just described. Right. And yeah. thinking about that in the context, like it's weird because I've talked about this in a very personal way. Um, but that was the first time I really, and usually I'm actually better at that. I usually connect everything to education, but like that was the yeah. first time I was like, oh, that is like, that's yeah. like something, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty cool to think about how your kids are excited about something that they're going to experience in their school, kind of looking forward to that um, and, and, and to share that. Um, you obviously have some like really amazing 
um, things happening in your schools. And mm -hmm. one of the things I really pride myself on is, um, you know, probably in Bellflower, people know about this stuff to some extent, maybe. Some. And I think part of it, I think part of our job, you know, in education is to make sure our communities at least know. But I really also want to have people on that are in communities that people have never heard of talk about these great things. Cause I want someone to go like, why don't we have an esports program in our school? Like, why are we doing right. aviation, right? right. What, what, what is part of the, the role, like kind of, of, you know, your board, um, the schools to kind of get some of that messaging out there? Like, how do you see is that? Cause you were, you were talking about this, about how you actually use social media to not only communicate, but actually really empower and bring, you know, like, you're not just like telling people what to do, but you're getting feedback, you're, you're bringing them into the conversation. And I feel if I feel like I'm contributing, I'm more likely to participate. Right? Why well, I always think of like that, I forgot what the saying is, it's uh, if a tree falls in the woods, and no one's around to hear it doesn't make a sound. Right. I feel like that that's been our district for some time of we have great things happening, but we haven't done the best job of highlighting those and in, in giving people that that information to make the kids want to you know stay active stay engaged and do things so the one of the first things that we uh did uh just a year and a half ago was we uh we filled a position for a, a pio just a public information officer we didn't have one before now we do and just the the social media engagement Is it esmeralda highlight, highlighting yeah yeah all right esmeralda <laughs> <laughs> nice. And she's great too. And, and like the, the social media content, she's been posting stuff about the graduations. Cause yeah. you know, I, I also work at uh, Long Beach city college at my full-time job. And that's what I do for the students there. And I, I, you, when you, when people feel like they're being highlighted and they're a part of that community and you're proud of them and you want to mm -hmm. show people like what they're doing. And then also the programs like giving it, it, it allows the community to, uh, feel confident and trust, uh, you know, what's happening in the schools because so often it can become contentious. So we have to open that up and we have to communicate. We have to use the tools where people are, you know, whether it's Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, right. uh, our newsletters, everything. We're doing a lot more of that. That's kind of the forward thinking mentality of, of highlighting what is amazing. And also, uh, you know, Lisa's amazing. Yeah. Our, our, I agree. She's family. awesome. She's great. And, and, you know, I remember we were at a, an event, uh, CSBA event, and there was something about a freight farm uh, initiative where they were growing all of the lettuce um, for their district, a, another district uh, on one of the campuses in one of these freight farms. And she saw it. Great. She thought it was a great idea. Now we have one at Bellflower and, and they're mm -hmm. making all of the lettuce for all of our salad bars, you know, Ugh. and that's like, to your point of like, you know, you want to share good ideas. Right. And I think, that the difference, you know, now and what I'm proud of this board for doing and Lisa is we have ears for it. Mm -hmm. and, and and not only that, but it's that, you know, how can we mentality yeah. instead of the old, uh, well, that's not the way we do it here. Like out with that, like, let's, you know, look forward and how can we create opportunity that the kids are going to not only enjoy now, but like look forward to as they, you know, progress through the grades. You know, so one, I know you're, and Brad was like, I was really happy. You, you told me you're, you're actually listening to Innovator's Mindset on an audio book and you're kind of getting through that process. Uh, you're going to love one of the concepts and I don't think you've got there yet just based on where it is. Um, but it is actually, you'll love it because you're doing it. And it's the idea of competitive collaboration. So like we, we really focus on the idea that it's really important to work with each other, right? Mm -hmm. To support each other. But there's also a little bit of like, I don't want to be the school that no one wants to go to because the other right. school is doing way better stuff. Right. And so it is that both the, the push and support process, right? So like, there is also the, the, the polar opposite of it where, you know, I think we just focus on collaboration, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, challenge us to be better. I've also thought in schools, I've experienced this, where some schools are like, this is what we do. And we're not actually going to teach you how to do it because that's yeah. our school. Yeah. And so kind of actually like having, kind of having both is saying like, Hey, we do this great thing and it's pretty good. You should do it. But if you want to, we'll, we'll kind of help you. So I think, right. I don't, I, I, I challenge people. I say like, like who wants to be the weak school here? And nobody ever wants right. to I'm like, well, one of you is <laughs> right. Right. And so like, you gotta, you gotta push each other and then support each other. 
it takes confidence to compete like in any area. And I feel like when you feel confident in what you're doing, you want to, you know, like you said, collaboratively compete. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, our esports program is a great example. You know, we started this where the, we call him the whiz Victor Palacios. He leads the charge on it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. He doesn't like safeguard what we're doing. Like he invites other districts and Hey, this is what you could do. Cause he knows as when those programs develop, that means more attention on the program in general, more funding, more access, more right. uh, scholarships, more opportunity for the students. That can be applied you know, everywhere. You have to be confident to compete. And if you want to compete and get something out of it, you're going to have to you know, be collaborative and, and find new ways to compete. I, I'm all about that. You know, I've never, I've never, you know, regretted sharing ideas openly, right? Like I, right. my ideas, like my blog, my podcast, and I always feel that when I highlight ideas, when I give, you know, opportunities for others to come on to, you know, I could just do the podcast where it's just me, but I learn a ton from the process, but I also feel it, you know, there's people that are watching that are like, I've never heard of, like, I'll be honest with you, I never heard of Bellflower until yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you invite me to speak there. I'm like, oh, where's Bellflower, right? right. So right. I think it just kind of, you know, we always it, like actually, highlighting others never diminishes your own light. And I think that's something that uh, is really important. Now, I, there's obviously like a million, like, of course you went into the board because you also have MMA experience and that's probably what you need right now to be on a school board. There's obviously right. that joke, but yeah. I'm not going to make it. I mean, <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like I do, like you said, is it two years you've been doing this? I've been, yeah, I've been on the board for uh, almost two years. Okay. So like, I, like most people are like, why would anyone start yeah, I get the it. board in the last two years? Right. And it's like right. all over, this is not, you know, like I have Canadian roots. It's not just a U.S. thing. It's not a California thing. It's it, like, it's, it's everywhere that there's a lot of contentiousness. So like, what, what made you want to, to do that? Um, and like, how do you see that you can, you know, really kind of bring people together? I, I, 100% agree. I, I totally, when people ask, like, why would you want to do all that? Because it's people have a false uh, perception of like, you know, you're doing it for the money. You don't get paid very much. You get a stipend. Right. You know? And it's not about. And that. someone says that, like, <laughs> I never yeah. knew that. I didn't even oh, know yeah, you yeah. got money. Yeah, I know. It's like 500 bucks a month. And I probably put in uh, probably at least right. 30 hours a week just right. doing board stuff. So, and, and all of our board members, like we put in a lot of work. So it's never about that. Like I could make more in a day, you know, doing something else. Um, but I think that even with all the contention and over the past four years, you know, school, like, why would you want to jump into that? I think it's because I, I feel like be the change that I want to see. Kind of, yep. I always feel like most people agree on 80% of things or 80% of any particular thing. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's, there's 10 on either side. Yeah. People uh, usually agree on what the problem is and then they may differ on solutions. Right. Mm. I feel like a normal person. I feel like I, I love listening to both sides. I love mm. trying to understand uh, what people are, are thinking when they're against me. And that helps inform my decision. It either helps me rethink, you know, my, my conclusion, or mm. it solidifies my conclusion. And, and I, I, but we need more people like that that are making decisions we, like up and down. We, we yeah. having just a, a parent from the community that, that understands, you know, SPED is always a big uh, thing in every district. Yeah. You know, having a parent who has been in those IEPs for hours and hours and understands the frustrations there. Um, but also, um, you know, can understand policy and, and how, you know, things need to run uh, from a district level, like I enjoy it. I've always enjoyed yeah. uh, public service and I love making a, a difference. And to your point of ideas, the, the, you know, giving ideas and, and sharing inspiration, mm. like even if somebody takes credit for that and, and, and does something with it, like just to know that like you played even a small little role, like that's what we need to do. Plant a bunch of seeds for ideas and innovation yeah. and, and, inspire people to do more because you can only do so much one of the things that i was like listening to when we were having this conversation prior to um you know kind of recording on the podcast is a lot of times when politicians and you know like you're a politician 
right? Like a school board, yeah. trustee, you know, like whether you want to be called that. I embrace that, it. I yeah, was against it, it at first. But it's yeah. fine. Whether you want to be called that or not, it, it is what you are. So I think part of it too is there's kind of this sense of like, I know the way, this is the way. And I don't, I just, I like, first of all, a lot of time, I don't know. I grew up, politicians were like, you know, not, you know, weren't like, oh, like people weren't aspiring to that. And, yeah. you know, it wasn't a great thing. And what I found really kind of refreshing about you is you exemplify something that I think should be more is a curiosity. Like yeah. maybe I'm wrong or, you know, maybe yeah. this isn't the way or like, Hey, how do we do this? And so when you're like, you're really kind of in that, that curiosity is crucial to be in a servant role and politicians are a servant role. And I, I could go right. off on this all day and I probably shouldn't, but <laughs> I think that's, a, that was really kind of refreshing. It's like, yeah. we're doing this. We're, you weren't like that. You're like, you know, yeah. we're thinking about this and you're like asking me questions and getting feedback. And, and I probably, <laughs> in all honesty, confused you more than, sure, than yeah. actually, you know, gave you a clear direction. But I think that's, we need to have conversations. We need to do that. Do you like, do you feel that's like kind of crucial that that role of curiosity? 100%. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, the, the, you have to have a, a, it takes a big dose of humility, right. To mm -hmm. not have the answers and a huge dose of curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, I like everything informs the you know, the decisions that we make. And one thing that I think Belfort Unified is really lucky to have right now is a board that uh, wants to hear from the community, like wants the input, wants it, because that does help inform. Um, you know, there's things, I have, a, I have a starting off point. I have like, well, this is what I think at this moment, yeah. but really it's not about what I think is right or what I think is wrong, generally speaking. It's what's right for our community. What's 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 going to work for us? And you're right. Like this is a public servant role. We're temporary, you know, not employees, but we're we're temporarily there. And you know, somebody else, you know, behind us is going to, you know, get what we created. Uh, and it's important to just have that humility. Like we people put their trust in us to sit up there and you know make decisions, but also listen to them mm. and also with listening to them also factor in the things that they are not going to spend the 30 hours a week to understand or consider in that decision so uh, what you know a lot of our community like they they seem to really appreciate that and understand that like they feel heard so that that mm -hmm. input is there and if we ever like differ on a decision it's because they trust like they were heard Right. And there was also more information that that also came in that maybe they're not privy to, whether it's closed session or whether it's uh, just, you know, digging into the the, the numbers and the pages. Mm -hmm. So that we have a lot of support in the, the community. Uh, and I think it comes through communication. Communication is at the key of it. But to sit up there, man, I, it's a it's a it's an honor. Like I'm always I'm always humbled to to be up there. The, the when I was a principal, there was a uh, something going on in our school, and I had a very clear thought of like where we needed to go, right? I, like I remember this very distinctly, and so I I always talk about serving leadership. You know, we serve a community. We really want to listen, hear the thoughts, and I basically I remember this. I remember saying, "Here's what I believe. This is what I the way we need to go," and my staff the majority of them pushed back and challenged me. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to them, listen, I don't agree. I don't agree with you. And I believe this still, but I hear you and we're going to go your way. Mm -hmm. And for me to actually say like, Hey, I, I like, I actually haven't necessarily changed my mind on my belief system, but I actually am here to serve the community. You're the community. This is a feedback. This is where you want to go right now. We're going to revisit this because I still, I think we need to kind of go back to it at some point. And I remember my assistant principal said that was so, you gained so much credibility with everybody when you actually, they knew you believed something, but you were there to serve them. So you went with what the belief was. And I actually didn't, like, I, I also wasn't like, um, I also wasn't, I guess I had a belief, but I wasn't like, no, this is a hundred percent the way it's like, I was open to the feedback. I was open to it. And I wouldn't say they changed my mind, right. but they, they kind of pushed me to say like, 
and it was like, as some people would see like, oh, you're weak, you back down for position. I was like, well, no, like if I make the, if I enforce a position that the majority of my staff were totally against, then, then it, like, would it have actually worked, you know? And so like, they knew where I stood, but I, I also wasn't like, hey, I'm right, you're wrong. It's like, hey, here's my belief. I understand the majority of you have this belief. So this is the way we go. And I think, you know, that's, I think that's like kind of a, I don't, I, I get, I felt like kind of going, you know, being open to that pushback and then accepting it actually gave me more credibility with them than ever. Like they trusted me more after I went their way. Right. Right. And, and they can own, you know, that, you know, then they kind of own that, mm -hmm. like uh, whatever that solution was. But I mean, like kudos for you to doing that because it's really hard for people to do. Politics is no place for stubbornness. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, don't get me wrong. We all, we all have like our, yeah. you know, our hills that will die on, you know, but not every hill, you know, is that. So when there's things where, you know, like, again, as long as we agree on the problem, hmm. I'm totally fine with, with, you know, disagreement or collaboration, collaboration on the solutions. Hmm. And, and that's where you can, you can yeah. give more and, you know, find solutions that work for the community. But it's really important to have a, a clear idea of not misidentifying problems. Yeah, like I just I, I really appreciate that curiosity with you. I, I I hope I hope other people are listening to this that you know are in a position similar to yours because I think you know we politically at all levels curiosity would benefit so much more. Like, hey, why do people think this? Like, why do we? You know, hey, why do you have that concern? Where are you there getting that from, right? As opposed to like, you're an idiot. I'm right, you're wrong, which is kind of yeah. you know, sometimes I feel like we need more people unifying and, and connecting. All right, so. Well, real quick on that, it sparks two thoughts for me. One, there was a podcast recently on uh, Joe Rogan where it's Terrence uh, Howard. Yeah, I know, the, the guy from uh, Avengers. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, Eric, well, part one. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Eric Weinstein, and it was amazing to watch because he was just talking about like just what you were saying, yeah. like uh, trying to understand like what he was saying. Yeah. Um, and second, it reminds me of something from your book of uh, it was a uh, once you stop learning, you start dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So curiosity is like that's the so that's the cure for that, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you can remain curious, you're never gonna stop learning because it's just a byproduct of that. One of my favorite things to do is go through my old blog posts and then repost them and say here's what i don't believe anymore and here's what i originally yeah, wrote that's cool it, it is kind of a neat thing to say and then yeah. model something to people like hey i'm always talking about learning pushing challenging your own thinking and so here's actually here's what i actually wrote here's here it is like it is and here's why i don't believe these things anymore or i still believe this but my approach of like presenting the information was terrible at the time here's how i would do it differently so right. like just kind of thinking about that, I think it models something to people that they're not used to. They're not used to someone right. saying like, hey, you know, like I, I was wrong. Like, you know, it, it just, it, it's it's more need in education. All right. Yeah. So like I told you, I got to take my kids. I know, hey, my girls, for a great movie. I'm taking my girl what, Inside Out 2, which I've heard yeah. amazing things about. It's so great. like, I it's always, you know, like when you go to a movie like that, you're like, God, it's like now it's too hyped up. It better be good. <laughs> Okay, it's not that great then. <laughs> okay, well, it's too late. I want to help. It's I bad. Help. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting you up for a refund. So, <laughs> I know. all right, last question I got for you. So I asked this yesterday uh, of the superintendent uh, of Lisa, um, but I'm curious your thoughts and see how similar or different they are. Um, so I'm going to be there speaking to your entire staff, your entire community, and I, I'm really excited about it. We've got some Super big plans. And I know, uh, how do you... If it was a su successful day, and I don't want to just to boil it down to like my talk, but even, you know, the morning where everyone's going to be there. How does that like, how do you see that? How would how would you kind of see that as a successful morning or a successful day for your staff? I think um, sim simply put, I want people to walk away from that day feeling that they are a part of the Bellflower Unified team mm. and that we're all moving in the same direction together, feel inspired to think differently and to make a difference in our community and really to feel valued in, a, in the way of 
you know, we, it, it's a big event, you know, it's mm. all of our, you know, it's 1500 employees, uh, you know, faculty and staff coming together. We haven't done it in our district for a very long time. And, you know, Lisa, when, when she brought this idea to me, she's like, I want them to all come together because it does take an entire village. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want, that's what we're trying to facilitate of us coming together. We're all on the same team. There might be issues that pop up here and there throughout the year, yeah. but we're, we're on the same team. And that's what I, that's what I want them to walk away from. I, that's what I want from, you know, all levels. I want the board to feel that I want our administration, our faculty, our classified workers. Um, and if we can do that and get the year started off on the right foot uh, with a uh, open mind, a level of mm. curiosity and uh, you know, sense of family, we're going to be golden. Well, I can't, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to meet you. Hey, yeah, so, likewise, man. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And like, I, like just talking to your community, uh, one of the things I really believe a lot of times people say, Oh, the system, I'm like, well, we are the system. Like the system right. isn't the wizard of Oz hiding behind a curtain. Like we right. are the system. We have ownership over the direction. So I, I really love that because, you know, I think every person contributes to our culture, to our systems and our schools. So I'm pumped to join you all. I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, I'm excited that people get to hear from you. Uh, well, I'm going to watch them and see how much they like you when they're, when you're here. Uh, uh. <laughs> right. I know like you, you kind of maybe board president, you start a deficit, but I, I'm sure they love you, man. I'm sure I do. They <laughs> would start throwing out that politician word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Brad, thanks so much for being on the podcast. George, Can't wait you, to meet man. you soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.